listening or watching to What's for Tea. Basically, two former support workers catching up with each other over a cuppa. Over a cuppa. So, how, how's your week been? I say week. Why do I say week? Is this is a fortnightly podcast. Yeah, but it's been technically that, a week since it went live. Is that how we're going to justify Maybe that to ourselves? Know. <laughs> I don't know. But this, yeah. this is only part two, so um, yeah. we're still kind of working the logistics. It out a little bit, and yeah. um, everything from kind of transitioning, kind of leaps, yeah, and to the format to what we do and mm-hmm. things like that. And yeah. I've asked you a question, and I've just kept on talking. <laughs> you know, I was like, "You're going to let me answer that question?" I mean, this is same. This is, this is the same thing I did last time, but you I know, know. You less rude but more time, rude. But well, I, well, it's like maybe it's now my turn to just <laughs> ramble on. And <laughs> um, what was the question? I forgot. It. How how are you? How's your week been? Fine. Fine. Your week's been all right. There's nothing you want to share. Why are you saying it like that? Because wasn't there like a particularly dark night Ugh, of the soul it. you had? I can't believe you're calling me out on this. Well, I was, yeah, I was staying at a friend's house, dog sitting, and I may, or may not have, mm-hmm. knocked over a drink. Okay. Diet Coke. Well, well, that, well, that happens, you know, and that's fine. It's... It went over an extension cable that's... and caused a blackout in the house. That's impressive. Well done. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Um, and I couldn't find the uh, the board to flick the electrics back on again, so I had to call my friend who was camping <laughs> to be like, I'm currently in the dark, help me. <laughs> the dog was so confused. I've just got these images of you kind of wandering around this dark house that you don't really oh, know. Oh, yeah. I went in every single room, door, cupboard, you name it. I was, I was frantic. And so was it one of those trip switches that kind of... Yeah, but they've got two. Yeah. Oh right, okay. So That's one, weird. Which I'm, oh, I'm, oh. For, you know, for anyone that remembers, I'm quite short. Okay. I'm five foot three, and even on a chair, I still couldn't quite reach. Okay. So I had to go on my tippy toes. You on your tippy toes? My tippy toes. Um, but it wasn't the right one. Apparently, it was like behind some sort of like false wall. I would never have found it. But it all got sorted, and I didn't break the house. So it was okay. All right, I'm 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 just trying trying to process electric trip switches, electric board. I don't actually know. I kind of talk talk a good talk about it. I don't actually know what it's called. It's um, known as trip it's called, switches. I, I call it circuit board, circuit electric board. board, trip switch board. You you unplug the extension cable before you switch the. Oh yes, the yes, of course I did. Trip and I on. that's good. I can't believe I'm, I'm, just, I can't just, believe I'm just call- thought I should just you know double check uh, yeah, this. Double um, I can't believe I'm calling myself out on this. And I I tipped the extension cable upside down, and all of this diet coke just poured out of the plug sockets. Yeah, it was bad. For the benefit of the slightly nervous voice in the back of my head, you didn't plug it back in, did you? No, no, no. I I left it to dry somewhere and i haven't plugged it back in i left it there okay. i left the house and i left it there and the people who run the house they know yeah not they know just to inadvertently plug it yeah, back yeah. in right okay yeah, that's yeah, good yeah, yeah. i just i just had images of them coming back from a lovely camping and trip electric heat. <laughs> and then going oh why is this unplugged plugging it back in and chaos no they know i thought i broke their house so that was my that's week. Good. That's good. How was your week, Andy? It's been remarkably boring. Thank you very much in comparison. <laughs> I've been doing very adulting things. Like oh, look at you adulting. Buying, well, well kind of semi-adulting. In, in that I got a new fridge freezer. Oh, look at you. Well, I say new second hand from my parents. Well, it's still new to you. So it's still new to us. Um, yeah, the old freezer was getting a little bit frozen and yeah is it supposed to be frozen well it, there's a limit to, to how much of a pure f- no, ice I mean, brick yeah. it's meant to be and yeah i feel like we should move on because i feel like we're gonna make our audience go to sleep us talking about fridge freezers fridge freezers ovens <laughs> turns out i know nothing about ovens either is that because you don't do the cooking in your house anywho <laughs> let's move on <laughs> So, there's probably an elephant in the room. What elephant? It's, it's kind of over in the corner. We try not to talk about it. 
It's off. You can't see it, guys. It's off camera. Yeah. So Elephant in the Room, if you're not sure, it's a phrase, it's a term used to describe there's something obvious happening yes. that people aren't talking about. A hundred percent. And we've been very jokey so far. Um but at the time of recording there's there's stuff happening. Just a tad in the country. Yeah, just a tad. And it's a bit it, it, it it's 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 horrible and it's sad and it is serious. Mm. So we're not gonna make light of it. No. We're not gonna joke about no, it because no. it is serious and you know, obviously this comes out not, you know, the day that we're filming it. Come, this comes out in about a week's time from filming. And it, the stuff, hopefully, what's happening in the news would have stopped. However, the impact is still there. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think that time delay mm-hmm. is kind of working against us a little bit. A little bit. In that it's, it means there's certain things that if we were to, to talk about it, mm-hmm. it, there's a risk it'll come out of date ridiculously quickly. Yeah. So if it so if it sounds like we're choosing our words carefully, it's because we're trying to obviously choose our words carefully, not make light <laughs> yeah. over it. Um, but also, it's important for us to talk about something that will be relevant in a week's time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so so what we wanted to talk about was these um, people are calling them planned protests. Mm. Um, but eff- effectively, they're kind of acts of violence and, you know, leading to riots that are happening across the whole of the UK. Mm. Um, and they are um, a certain demographic of people uh, that are participating in these um, these planned protests um, that are targeting another certain demographic, mm. um, our more diverse kind of brothers and sisters, mm. um, based on kind of false information that was put in the press of an incident that happened in the country yeah. that's led to this. Um, and as an organisation, we are n- not only diverse in the, in, the, in the kind of clientele that we work with, mm. the, the residents that live at the YMCA, but also our staff team mm. are very diverse. So for us, this is personal um, as an organisation, mm. as it is to many people in the country yeah. um, and around the country. Um, and I thought it was only fair, you know, some people might have questions about how we are dealing with it as an organisation. Mm. Um, so effectively, we're talking to our young people about what's going on, mm. um, assuring that they, you know, if we know that there's certain areas that potentially are going to be unsafe, making mm. sure that they're aware of that and that they're planning their journeys. If they're feeling anxious about going out during certain times, let us know and we'll offer them support. Um, and effectively to our more diverse um, residents, um, that are are the demographic of people that have been personally kind of attacked in these these events, ensuring you know you know that we're there to support them, um, yeah. that checking in on them how they're feeling, making sure they feel safe. Mm. Um, if they've got any family across the country where you know the where more of the violent offences are taking place, that you know that the basically that just that we're here for them, we we support mm. them and um, yeah, and that we're with them. Yeah. essentially and that's kind of the message we've also been giving to you know um all of our residents is that you know reach out to your to your family your loved ones your neighbors that um are the demographic that are are being um targeted to yeah. make sure that you know just offer support and mm. um to say that we're standing by them in this yeah. time yeah and i think just to add to that in that if it's very easy during this sort of, sort of new cycle mm. to kind of um, be stuck in this cycle of kind of checking your phone and checking for latest updates and looking to see what's new. Mm. And I'm not going to say to, to keep doing that. I'm not going to say to stop doing that. But what I'm going to say is that, you know, if you feel that's not good for you, Hundred percent. Yeah. Then you know permission to step away and to disconnect. Yeah. For whatever length of time. Exactly, and I think it's also being mindful. Like social media is great. Obviously, we're mm. using social media with podcasting, Facebook, etc. Mm. But sometimes it has its drawbacks. You know, people will circulate um, information and news that isn't accurate. Um, it's false. And that can lead to kind of fear mongering, hmm. anxiety, 
So it's just being mindful, I think, of the information and the sources that you're using and just being mindful that, you know, the source that you're you're getting it from might not be 100% accurate hmm. um, and just taking that on board. Um, and also... But they may not be purposely inaccurate. No, they might, no, no, They no, might no. just be sharing something oh, else that they've heard. Yeah, no, no, and not the per- And the hope and the kind of... The purpose be- behind them sharing information might be completely... 100% oh, innocent. honest and, and innocent. Yeah, exactly, and... yeah. But it's just, I think, as a, as a person taking in that content is being mindful mm. of the source, as in, you know, where the original information is coming from, that it might not be 100% accurate. What do you mean by mindful? Um, <laughs> Sorry. Just, I guess, being uh, mindful, aware. So when you are reading something, so like, you know, when I'm on Instagram or Facebook, it's just in the back of my mind there is you know the phrase take it with a pinch of salt you know is being aware that it's not necessarily going to be 100 percent accurate yeah and you know reminding yourself of that when you take in that information um because yeah like i said you know seeing these constant news cycles and stories that are going on social media can add to someone's anxiety and fear um so yeah it's just kind of having that in the back of your mind and being mindful of that Now, <clears throat> on a slightly different subject. Yes. Last week we talked about loneliness. Yes. Uh, this, and between now and then, we've been asked to talk about it more. Yes, we have. Um, so we're like, all right. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah, I think specifically, I think some people, from what we gathered from the comments, wanted to know a bit more about the, I guess, loneliness impacting residents and how that can impact them on their journey through um the ymca mm. more specifically or through another supported project mm. so that's what i understood from the comments and i th- am i right in thinking that's right yes I, I mean i think i think there are kind of two two sides to the comments mm. and uh one, one was that and one was kind of more kind of practical kind of tips and yeah things like that um I'm struggling with the with loneliness through the point of view of people kind of moving through supported projects. So, um, because I'm not a young person moving through a supported project, I, I I'm talk- also not a young person. What, Andy? Well, what? I I, th- I think that's the very first time I've actually admitted publicly I'm not young anymore. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you want to. Take, I will take that part. Take that one. Yeah, because obviously as the coordinator of one of the projects, mm. I can kind of um, see it and, I, and, and deal with it with our young people. You've got an insight. Quite insight. I yeah. wouldn't say, again, I'm not... A, I'm going to say I'm a young person, because I am. Um, compared to you, Andy, I am. Um, yeah, I went there. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm not a young person living in the project, so again, can't speak from there. Yeah, she's getting older. I am getting older. Let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> um, so I think when people come through to the, to the YMCA, obviously not everyone will know the other young people living in the project. Mm. Um, some are very wary of it. Some of people may have got burnt from bad experiences previously with housemates or friends. Um, and typically what we see is is a lot of our young people really struggling to leave their room. Um, Mm. so yeah, they will just kind of stay in the same four walls, um, will only really leave their room to get their food shopping, even struggle to use the shared laundry facilities in case they bump into people. Um, and, you know, really struggle to engage in kind of the more community group stuff. Um, so we really try and uh, as an organization, try and make sure that there's a range of different things for all different people's interests. So making sure there's something for gaming, making sure there's something for like arts and crafts, etc. cetera, mm. um, to just try and encourage people to come out and socialize. Now we're not expecting residents to all link arms and be best friends. Mm. Um, but it is important as like we mentioned in the previous episode to have that connection and just be around other people. Um, And I think it can be a process. I think some people really struggle as soon as they move in with that. Mm. Um, Getting out and just being around other people. It's a process. And and typically what we find towards the end of someone's stay, especially at stage one, the the St. David's Hill Hostel, is that they are getting out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, 
now you you know kind of move to stage two which is our new court you know by new uh, in new court project where it's a house share yeah that i think makes it a little bit easier for people not to feel necessarily as lonely mm. because obviously it's shared kitchen shared kitchen you know you're going to bump into someone yeah um and you know we typically encourage kind of um whatsapp groups or facebook groups with your other housemates in case you've got a problem mm. that they can help you also, you've got the house that's joined as well next to to that um, your your house that you're living in, which again you kind of have a shared courtyard, so you're bumping to people there. Mm. Um, not to say that people won't experience loneliness, but I think it's harder to experience mm. it in a house share in a, in a smaller community. Mm. You've got to bear in mind that St David's Hill is 31 young people living there, so it's a lot bigger, yeah. it's a lot easier to to feel isolated mm. um, and lonely. And then some people will be like, well, surely if you've got more people it's harder to feel lonely and what i would say is you know it's it's really easy to feel lonely in a crowd exactly like you know my older sister lives in london and you know london is known for being quite a lonely city even though it's very packed because everyone thinks oh there's loads of people they're all right they don't need checking in on whereas when it's a smaller community you're more likely to bump into the same people over and over again and have those Mm. connections and those conversations and then obviously then um, you've got the stage um, stage three and four, which is Exwick and Sidwells. And again, um, shout out to Lizzie, who is the coordinator for Sidwells and Exwick. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Lizzie. Um, that will teach her to make sure she watches the podcast. Um, yes. Calling them out there, Lizzie. Um, and she's really trying to encourage community out there. And a lot of people that want to apply for, for stage three and four are a bit confused by that and like, why? But it's really to make sure that people aren't isolated mm. and feeling lonely. Because Sidwells, it's your own studio flat. X wick it is you're just sharing with one other person so it's a lot easier to feel isolated and lonely in there so having those community spaces which is really int- trying to encourage that to get people out of their flat and not be isolated and lonely mm. so that's kind of the journey that someone will experience so stage one quite easy to feel lonely and isolated however towards the end they might come out of their comfort zone a little bit more mm. our stage two project less lonely mm-hmm. less isolated but then you move to stage three and four, which is Exwick and Sidwells, and you go back to kind of falling into that loneliness and isolated um, setting. So that's kind of a journey that someone might go through and what we're trying to do to combat loneliness and isolation. What hear, hearing you describe that mm. reminded me of was a was a piece of advice I heard quite a few years back. Um, not going to say the, the member of staff's name because they might get a bit happy <laughs> uh, that I remembered it or oh, actually they might not even remember they them said it. saying it at all but the less you do something the harder it becomes mm-hmm. yeah and that can apply to lots of things in life yes 100% yeah no I love that piece of advice because I think it's 100% accurate mm. and it kind of stayed with me for whatever reason was mm. at the time uh, I don't know um, and Listening to particularly um, stage one, mm. um, that is very much how it how it sounds. That actually, you, because you are encouraging um, the newer residents to kind of come and get involved with stuff. Yeah, you're making it easy. You're making it well. Yeah, that's the hope. E- or at least easier. easier. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I should easier. say. Yeah, um, and we do at stage one um, try and do kind of like setups. That sounds bit wrong in that in that turn of phrase but i mean in well, terms of like in terms of like if we know that oh this person likes this mm. and they're quite similar to this person who likes this mm. let's connect them together yeah so we'll be like oh I'll come meet us in reception and be like oh hey do you know so and so and this is so and so and like you know just to help them not feel so alone so mm. we, we do tend to do that in stage one and i know that that's sta- you know that's kind of something that is done through all the stages as well so we can ask for a few practical tips we did and i loved the group um this is me kind of using random words now when i'm trying to find that space in my notes oh uh, is this where we're going to mention some people in their comments yes okay so um shout out to bobby i liked bobby's comment i loved it um, I'd remind them of my address and say, come over and play Legos and drink fruit shoots. I mean, Lego. Yeah. Lego is the way to, to my soul. Yeah. I'm there for the fruit shoots. I, I, fruit I am classic Lego collector. Now. You are. I, I have boxes of Lego that I've just sat there. 
For on me, the shelf, silently judging me. Yeah. I can understand Lego. It's just not for me. I don't have the patience for it. You're all about the fruit shoots, aren't you? I'm all about the fruit shoots. I'm there for the fruit shoots. And, that, and that's, again, absolutely fair. <laughs> but most importantly, what... I kind of miss what, fruit shoots. It depends on the flavour of the fruit shoots. I think it was Black Current was, Ooh, was the winner. Yeah. yeah. They do it's apple. been a while. They do apple now. I'm not a fan of the apple. Can't remember apple. Yeah, no. It used to be orange and black currant mm. when I was a kid. But they've branched out. Um, anyway. Anyway, moving on. We're going down a rabbit hole of fruit shoots. <laughs> the uh, Hello, welcome to the fruit shoot podcast. <laughs> um, and again, on a similar line, um, Dan said, fancy a few games on the PlayStation or Xbox. So I think yeah, it's encouraging actually, someone to come over. Yeah. Or I guess playing online or, or as well. Online. Yeah. And again, that kind of comes back to making it easier because connection doesn't necessarily have to be kind of out of the house talking to someone face to face yeah um yeah completely without falling down the gaming is good rabbit hole too much <laughs> uh which i firmly believe um actually you can have very positive relationships online with someone yeah um also just to give a shout out to another podcast if you are into gaming you, there is a there is a podcast they can check listen. out skill check on Spotify. There you go, um, and then Rob put about you know actually kind of what I got from his comment is 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 a tip about being persistent mm. and not giving up on an individual even if it is quite difficult and it's really if they're finding it difficult to get through to someone is what I got from from Rob's comment is being consistent and persistent. That's what I got from, I like from his that. comment. Yeah. Um, did, I think that was it, really, in terms of comments. Yeah, I think two that I would add to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, one would be, it's okay to try and seek people out. Yes. Uh, so if you know a particular group of people are somewhere nearby, and you might not even want to kind of talk to them particularly, just want to be mm. with people. Yeah, 100%. That's okay. Yeah, like I said in the first episode, you know, I, I go to coffee shops and read. Yeah. It's not because yeah. I want to interact with people. I'm actually quite introverted anyway mm. as a person. But just being around other people so you know you're not kind of alone and, again, just staring at the same four walls. Mm. Um, yeah, 100%. I agree with that. I agree with that. But suggestion. also, and it's going to sound really counterproductive to some okay. people, Facebook. Yes. Particularly Facebook community groups. Yeah, and I just like to have a little bit of like we're loving like just a bit of a shout out. We're loving the uh, once alumni group chat for that reason, yes. and we are so like we didn't expect it to when we create when we came mm-hmm. up with this and created this for there to be a community in the in the um, in the in the chats and the messenger. Mm. We expected on the nest, uh, on the page, but yeah, just seeing that like you know reaching out. I, I'm struggling with this, and loads of people giving advice, saying mm. I'm here for you, checking in, and how things are going. It's lovely to see. Um, and yeah, Facebook um, is, is great for that. Yeah, and so if you like move into a new area, it is worthwhile kind of typing in the name of that area into Facebook. Yeah. Find a local Facebook group. Find out what's happening in the local area. Yeah. Because even if it's not something you're interested in, yeah, at least you know what's going on. 100%. So if you see that group of people, um, I don't know, just down the road doing something you know what it's about yeah and you are and you have that connection to what is happening and you're there going i don't know yeah i would also add as well there's a few there's a few parents on our on our Mm. facebook alumni and you know you can feel quite isolated and lonely as a as a parent to children Mm. um even though you've got children at home but you know not having people around you that understand you know the difficulties of raising a child raising children so I'd say like you know reaching out to local kind of parent groups um in your area there's also Facebook pages as well for for parents um so I would say you know if you're struggling with that in terms of being a parent and being at home with children um then definitely I would say check out kind of yeah your local groups yeah you got dad's net for the dads yeah um there's the name of another. There's well, it's the name of a in-person group for dads in Exeter. I will try and remember to put link to link it here. in yeah. the show notes. Yeah, you didn't remember to put the link last time for the article. I had to remind you. Well, yeah, if you go back, it, it looks like I did. <laughs> yeah, but if you look back, you'll see the comment of me saying, "Where is it?" So. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
Yeah, um, but yeah, they're all really great suggestions that came through. Um, and I loved, and also thank you for the love from the last episode. And, you know, um, yeah, we appreciate it. So before we finish. <laughs> yeah. So before we finish, right. Cosmo. Yes. On our Facebook group, Cosmo got a lot of love. He did get a lot of love. There was also some conversation about cat people or dog people. I felt no. So I... Let's hang on, hang on a minute, hang on, stop there. All right. He put this survey to call me out, no. and then and I was like, how can you do me? How can you do me dirty like that? <laughs> so we had filmed about cat the, the episode, and then as he then put, you there was then a lot of talk about cats. Survey out about you know. Who I just wanted cats to make sure where I stood in life. Um, but there wasn't was an option about. for both. And I did say in my in the episode that I was a cat and a dog person. Okay, right. Let's let's have a look at your mug. It says I've got what, cat, it says I've got catitude. It's not my mug. It's a staff member's <laughs> mug um, that I don't know, but I might steal it because I like it. They got little. Well, they got little. It's got a little tie on it. Oh, I love it. I love it. On that note, <laughs> we should probably start to say goodbye before we yes. start talking about stealing other people's mugs <laughs> too um, much. Well, yeah. Do you want to do you want to start with ending and then? Well, I'll, um, we want to hear your stories. Yes. Uh, either stories of a social situation you want to help to navigate, uh, any tips and tricks for navigating life, and also pet talk. Pet talk. We I think pets. there's stuff about pet talk that we can mine, you yeah. know, for a podcast. I would love to see a comment, like the comments of just people putting pictures of their pets. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we want to see pets. We want to see pets. We love animals. And, you know, if you, if you send us pictures... We'll try and, you know, put them somewhere. Somewhere we might, things. you know, give a little shout out to someone's pet. Yeah. I, have it right here. I did this in the last episode, I noticed. But, um, anyway. uh, that's just going to look weird. Without <laughs> it, I know, you did you dirty yeah. like that last time as well. Because I went, did I? yeah, and there was oh, nothing there. Was nothing yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but yes, thank you for listening. Thank, thank you for you watching. Thank you so much. Um, um, if, if you, you liked it, if give you us liked a like. It, give us a like. Um, uh, leave a comment, follow us on Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe yes. on your favourite podcast provider, as long as it's Spotify or Apple. Yeah, because that's where we are. At the moment, yeah. And uh, thank you for listening. See ya.